So hi everyone, uh, my name is Kotomi. Um, today I am going to present chapter five from R4 Data Science second edition book. The topic is about workflow in code style. Before we begin, I would like to let you know that I had an issue with GitHub and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. So I'm going to use R notebook for this presentation. And I apologize any inconvenience in advance as it might be a little bit difficult to follow, but I will do my best. So learning object is how to style your code. Um, why do we want to learn about coding style? It's because using a consistent code style makes it easier for others, like your friends, coworkers, or classmates to read your work. And in this chapter, the more most important points in styling codes from the tidy verse style guide are introduced. And if you like to know more about it, you can visit the link. It is in the book. And first, um, let's talk about package. So there is a package called style R and we can use it on our studios command palette. And command palette looks something like this. This lets us use any built-in command on our studio and many additional ones provided by packages. What we wanna do here in order to use style R on command palette is to first like install packages style R and open command palette. You can use this shortcut, command control and shift MP. And then if you type style R, you will be able to use all the shortcuts offered by style R. And additionally, throughout this chapter, we are going to use tidyverse and NYC write 13 packages. So first, um, talk about names and variable names that created by uh, assigning operator or mutate function should only, sorry, should only have lowercase letters, numbers, or underscore. If you have a lot of names for related things, it is a good idea to make it consistent. And if you have a bunch of variables that are variation on a theme, you might want to give them a common prefix, not a common suffix. It is because all the complete works best on the start of the variable. And in general, it's better to prefer long and descriptive names rather than concise names that are just fast in typing. Because when you use short names, like for that moment, you might be able to save relatively small time when you are coding. But when you read your old, co old, old code, it can be time consuming to remember what the names are referring to. So for example, um, these are bad examples of like names. The first one is using all cap 
capital letters and no underscore to separate words. And the second one is using underscore to separate words, but like it's hard to uh, understand what each word is like referring to. So instead, if we use these variable names, short underscore flights, like at the first glance, you can like easily understand uh, what this variable means. The next is spacing. For spacing, um, use spaces on either side of mathematical operations, except for this caret. And make sure to put a space after a comma. And we don't want to put spaces inside or outside of parentheses for regular function cells. So for example, here we have spacing um, uh, between assigning operator and with before and after of like plus mathematical operation and before and after of divided by operation, but not um, around caret. And another example is here, we have spacing after comma, like not before comma. With the, I was gonna say with the spacing and like the parentheses and stuff, I know for me, like when I was doing like LaTeX mathematic, like um, mathematical equations with LaTeX, and I'm like, why won't it work? And it was because like I had spaces inside of the parentheses. It's so like sensitive. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it, for some people, it might look easier to read, but yeah but um if you feel like adding extra spaces to make alignment improve like it is totally okay to add them like for example in this code um here it is creating multiple variables in mutate and you might want to use you might want to add some extra spaces after like here speed and departure hour variables so that um, all the equal signs will line up. This way your code looks more tidy and easier to skim the code. The next day is pipes. The pipes should have a space before the operator. And typically the pipe operator is the last thing you want to see in the line. Like for example, here, like even though with piping, uh, all the codes are in one line. But instead of like writing this, if you separate, if you change the line by typing, uh, piping, like it looks more cleaner. And if the function you are piping into has named arguments, then put each argument on the new line. On the other hand, if the function does not have named arguments, then keep everything on one line as long as it fits. So here are the examples. So this code 
group by is um not the named arguments so you don't want to um, put argument in another line you want to make it in one line but um, after the piping you change the line and for summarize like you will have arguments named arguments so you want to make it in like uh like separate line And make sure to have um, this um, spacing. Uh, when you change the line, make sure to have like two extra spaces before it starts. Like our, will, our studio will do it for you automatically, but if anything, like make sure to like add two extra spacing before. And it's okay to shark some of these rules if your pipeline fits easily on the line. Like for this one, like it's very simple, compact line, just one line. So it's okay if you don't want to add line add into lines. But if you do it, when you want to make make it change to the code, like add some lines or like delete a part of the code, it will make it much easier to process. Do you have any questions or comments? No questions, but I did have a comment from earlier um, where you were talking about um, naming things and like where it's easier to um, have the same prefix rather than suffix. Right now I'm naming stuff within a, um, within a project. I have like images and stuff and like there's a bunch of logos. So rather than having like, maybe it says like Twitter logo or like GitHub logo, having logo underscore Twitter, logo underscore GitHub, like it makes sense. So yeah, I like that. Yeah. Like when you have to come up with it, it might take some time, but as you code and if you get used to it, I think it will make it much easier and uh, faster to code. Yeah. So, um. Next, we have ggpro2, and the basic rules for pipe can be applied to ggpro2. Just to make sure to treat uh, this plus sign the same way as pipe operator. For example, um, here we have write data set, and we have like pipe operator, we use group by, summarize, and then we are creating ggplot. But for ggplot, we want to use um, plus operator, not uh, pipe. And if you have like long, like long arguments, like many arguments, it's also okay to make it in each line. Um, since the ggpro was written before the pipe was discovered, like we have to use this uh, pipe operator and press operator for this transition, like. Yeah, I'm curious if they're ever going to change it, but I think it would take like a lot of like a lot of changes in the source for ggplot to change that probably. Yeah. I kind of already used to with this press. <laughs> so 
I don't know how it will be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, um, and then we have section in comments. Um, I actually never used this before, but basically, when your scripts get longer and longer, you can insert insert them to break up your file into pieces. Um, you can create this using uh, command shift R and it will appear in like this, this section. It's like uh, the code navigation drop down at the bottom left of the editor. Yeah. And here are some exercises. And yeah, like, do you have any, anything you would like to share? I don't know, I just think that's cool. Like I'm learning more and more about all the shortcuts they have and yeah, my life could have been so much easier if I knew all these. Yeah. So it's really like does anyone know how to do this pipe shortcut? Uh, I believe it's control shift M and try your art studio and see if it works. Mm. Because for that I I get like percentage uh, greater than percentage. Oh, I think you have to change the settings in the global options. Okay. Uh, yeah, because uh, you have to check one box to turn it to the this new pipe instead mm. of the Magrid R uh pipe. Uh, okay. let me see if I can still remember by opening some old files and see. Yay. Yes, uh, if you go to the tools in the R Studio, I'm not sure, tools, then global option. Hello? Yeah, yeah I'm following. Cool. Yeah, tools, a global option, and then you type, uh, go to code, code. Code? Yeah, you see like there's editing, display, saving, right? Yeah. Yeah, you click on the editing. I think it's already clicked. You go down to, I think, the fourth one and say, use native pipe operator. Oh. And, and check on that check box. Yeah. And then you click apply. Wait. Did it work? Okay, okay. Oh okay. Oh okay. Now now it's showing this newer version. Yeah, I think you just need to like change some settings. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh wait. Okay. Yeah, maybe you can share your screen to show the options that you have changed. Because I think not uh, all of us know it's... about it and we can't see your screen. <laughs> yeah, now it says my screen sharing is paused. I think you're only showing the window. You'd have to change yeah. it to um show your, um I think it just says show desktop and it will show everything. Like, should I do new share? Yeah, if you, I think if you do a new share and then you can choose to show um, your desktop versus um, just a window. Now, can you see? Yeah. Yeah, so what I did was I went to tools and global operations. 
and under the code, I didn't check box here, so I just checked. And then now, um, if I do shift command M, I can use this new pipe. Nice. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Katomi. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, I was wondering for the longest how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think this chapter was um like easy to follow, but very important principles to keep in mind. So, um, as you write more code and share your code with more people, um, you will see how important to have consistency in your code. So, I hope today's presentation will be helpful to practice and like build our like code style. I have a question. Uh, I'm not sure like how do you do you use style R before that? Because usually most of the time you may have to work with people who with other people's code and they were definitely not going to make it to the style of all these tidy bus style and you may have to clean them on their behalf or something like that. I was wondering if there is a, some tips that you may know to quickly clean code so you can read it as quickly as possible. You mean clean the code style? Yeah, like because all this code style that we learn, it's like, okay, we can do it for our own script, but most of the time when we collaborate with other people, they will not follow these kind of styles and can be hard to read and you may have to reformat the codes. I was wondering if, if you have a way of any like efficient ways to indent the code, for example, like like usually like for the long pipe chunks, I try to use control shift A to append the codes, for example. Mm. Does like, anyone not, have any suggestions? Like, does style are like automatically style your sheets for you? I'm not so sure because I don't really use style out often. I mean, for, for me, yeah. I, I also don't do it auto. I mean, there, I'm not sure if there's a package who could do that automatically, sort of like a auto tidy, auto tidy your code. Uh, but I think it's useful to go through the entire code one by one as you indent, because as you indent, you sort of like bring in, um, how should I put it? The you, you try to understand the code and at the same time you style it. So I think it serves a dual purpose. If that's the case, if you do the automation, it might not be very, you, uh, you might miss the chance to understand the code. At least that's my feeling about it. Oh, okay, tell me if you open up the most recent. Um, I put a link in the chat for style styler, and maybe I don't know if you could show it in Jeremy if this answers your question. Like it looks like what it does is it does format it according to the tidyverse style guide. Like that was your question, kind of, Jeremy. Yes, yes, I think that that would be very helpful because I usually work on the laptop and I don't have a very big screen like my other colleagues. And usually when they write commands, they're like super long in one line. It's hard for me to read and indent without any errors. Yeah, that, that, that would be very helpful. Yeah, it's very cool. And yeah, I also put the, the link for the Tidyverse style guide. It's in the chat as well. Um, yeah, so these are definitely things to like look into because that looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Lydia. No worries.
I think I have a comment about that. Um, when I was taking uh, a class in Python, uh, my professor said that basically coding is learning a new language, as we all know, but it's also uh, the way you speak, the way you uh, project your own language. So the style might be something that's standard from the package or you know the language you're coding, but it's also the coder. So it might look beautiful for some people that has all the years of experience doing this, and it might not be the same for somebody that is just starting or has you know, many other languages under their belt. So I think the style, it can uh, you know, vary it or change depending on the code or two, right? Uh, yeah, I believe it depends. Like, I think like Python has their own coding style and Java has their own coding style as well. Like from my understanding, like for R, you have to usually use the underscore to separate two words, but for JavaScript, uh, it's actually a hyphen like minus sign because, uh, the underscore in Java was used for something else very important, just like the minus in R was used for something very important. So they don't encourage you to do that. So there are some slight discrepancies based on what programming languages you write. And actually regarding styles and other languages, um, I'm not learning Python. I haven't run into the issue myself yet, but I'm hearing about how like Python is very particular about like if you have spaces and then you go to run a code, like, like if you have spaces beyond like the code you wrote, and then you go to run it, like it won't run. And I think it won't tell you why. <laughs> it is true of Python, like but also in Python, and I know this because that happens to me during my class. Uh, of, of course, in the class, even though that was an intro class, uh, there were coders uh, that had experience, years and years experience, and not just in Python, but in many, many other uh, um, languages, and they just use Python as a glue. To other languages, and you can totally tell by the way they they uh, wrote their code. Me as a beginner, literally was very mechanical, very to the point what I needed to have done. But if you see my code versus those that had so many uh, years of experience, my code did exactly the same thing. But I have ten lines of code, and they have two, for example. So it's the same thing with any language, I believe. It doesn't matter if it's R or not. Remember, Lydia, back in the day when we didn't know about pipe and our code were like this long until we learned pipe? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that's what I'm trying to say about um, styling. It's beautiful and it's nice that you have, you know, those tools. But also, if the person is still learning and is trying to, you know, integrate all their packages, all their languages, um, and all their, uh, learning their own style, it's not going to be standardized for everybody the same way. Well, uh, for me, I usually just learn from others. Like, like I say, like hi. Um, uh, maybe just be polite and say like, maybe you can ask like why they write things in a certain way, and just try to ask politely so that you won't sound like you think you know all and that's kind of problems. But like for I have one experience I have to share. It's like when I have to do like C plus plus code. I'm not sure in Python as well that some people put like I plus plus instead of I equals I plus one. So I did ask like why many people put the I plus plus instead of the I equals to I plus one for those variables that just increment by one. And they tell me that actually it's easier to read for like my situation when I had like a laptop and a very small space and I can't read like very wide codes. And another reason is because it helps them to have less, less typo errors because they type the I once, especially when it comes to variable names that were very long. 
So I have a long variable name because to a long variable main plus one is easy to make typos instead of. But typing this long variable name plus plus is has less uh, prone to errors. So that's kind of like it tells me to like to type like to follow this kind of style, like why they follow this kind of style as well. So I don't say that all the styles are correct or something. It's just like how you ensure that you write your code that such that the other person or your colleague is able to understand what you write, right? I mean, all these lessons that we have, it's just try its best to help people understand what you're writing your code. I understand it doesn't apply to everyone because sometimes it's if it's a novice reading, they have different expectations than someone who is more experienced. But I think the goal is not rather which style you want to follow, but rather is you write a style that people can understand. And you may have to adapt to different styles based on what kind of people you are working with. Yeah, I totally agree. I believe the experience gives you that and also asking. Yeah, definitely with experience, because I know like my code at the beginning of my degree program versus my code at the end. <laughs> it was like at first it was just utilitarian, just need to get it done. And then we have then after a while it's like, okay, I have the time to make this readable by someone else. Yeah, I also remember like when I first like starting coding, I often use like variable names like X, Y, Z <laughs> because it was very short and easy to come up with but then like when you look up back those codes like you wouldn't like I wouldn't be able to understand what they were yeah definitely but the thing is um once you start working as a group you cannot start learning those um style too because now you're not just coding for yourself or learning the basics now you actually doing something collaboratory with your group and you want to share your work so i guess it's on a way step by step <laughs> yeah it also depends on the id or the working environment because like why the r always use like this strange arrow to make the initialization instead of equal or why you have to type the pi and someone who's not using our studio may find it very inconvenient because they don't have the shortcuts like control shift m for the pi and alternate plus minus for the arrows so typing in a different code editor will give this inconvenience and it can be hard to for them to understand why we write things this way. So it definitely takes some time as well. Yeah, but for me, it's also depending on the editor that you use that helps you able to type these things easily. Like I know like our studio has this control shift A to make this indentation a lot easier. So that's why uh, we are able to do write short codes or to create like very, very long lines vertically rather than writing long lines horizontally. Like if you don't know this control shift A, maybe you're more intending to write it more wide instead of vertical because it's more work to make it look nice when it's vertical. You need to like have the space, you need to align them and this kind of thing can be quite painful. Through all the chat about like, even though it's like programming languages, I keep thinking of like when I was first like learning Spanish and then like, it was like, yo voy, tu vas, but then people could just be like, voy. And it's like, wait, <laughs> what's happening? Or it's just like, when you already know something, you can like kind of leave parts off, but it might be difficult for a beginner to be like, wait, that's not the way it's supposed to go. Like, I don't know if you understand what I mean, but like. 
Yeah, and it comes to the issue where you have like this, like when you have a course and people start to type things very quickly because they use keyboard shortcuts and you find it very hard to catch up sometimes. Especially like the pipe, like, if you didn't know the control shift M commands, you may have to type like this straight line and more than or percentage, more than percentage, which yeah. may take some time and it's hard to catch up as well. That's true. Yeah. It's a very cool chapter. I really enjoyed this. I'm definitely going to look into like the style guide and all that. It's pretty cool. But yeah, so I guess, I guess that'll be it for today. Thank you so much, Kotomi, for presenting. This is like a really good chapter. Um. Oh. So next week, well, actually, let me put one.